for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip of the Man. She's always got another full offensive breakdown for you guys today. Today, I'm be going over the Buffalo Bills. If you guys don't know, every single month I put out a full breakdown of one of my ebooks in video format, whether that's an offense or a defense. I'll try to have some links in the description for some of the offenses and defenses I went over prior, but every month I try to give you guys a full breakdown. So if you guys want me to continue this series, as always, hit the like button, let me in the comment section. Also, if there's a specific team playbook you guys would like to see me put out next month that I've already made, let me know in the comments section below other than that i'm going to start off this video with some offensive videos that i've already put out on youtube uh, and then i'm going to end the video with about an hour and a half worth of stuff that's never been on any of my platforms other than on my join our community tab and uh my patreon so if you guys want to see more videos like this hit like button let me know in the comment section other than that's going to get right into the video offense i'm going to show you guys today is an offense that i actually showed you guys in the past this trips halfback week i don't think that this particular uh formation was called that last year but i put out some plays from this last last year uh, in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Other than that, the two plays I'm going to show you guys are the close X fade. If you caught a video that I put out recently where I, it was called five glitch routes, this particular route was in that. This is a great man beater. I know a lot of people are running man coverage right now for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, but yeah, man coverage is, is pretty large in mutt, and this particular route destroys that. A lot of routes on this particular play destroy that. Then you have the, the close Bills cross. Now, this particular play, too, is also a great man beating play, but it also has a lot of sense because it's a lot of different defenses. So this particular play is probably going to have the most home run effects on zone coverages as well. The uh, the choice zig is a very explosive play. You can pretty much tell by you know which one of these routes is going to be the home run route. And then and also the PA wide receiver ends a very explosive play. So we're going to go, we're going to pick the close X fade on the offensive side. Like I said, this is a man beating play for the most part. And I see a lot of people running man coverage, especially when it comes to plays like cover one hole. So let's go ahead and start off with that. Now, as always, this video is brought to you by my coin sponsor, AOEH.com. If you guys want to get your Mutt team up and support the channel at the same time, you can check them out. Link in the description below and use discount code money, uh, which will get you 3% off. But ultimately, there's a different discount code going on right now where you can use discount code email and get 6% off. So obviously, you probably want to do that. That will save you more money than mine but ultimately checking them out through my link in the description will help me out and it really supports this channel so thank you guys for that this route right here that Diggs is running doesn't need any adjustments and it's a really good man beating play um, it just runs right past the cornerback to be honest with you which makes absolutely no sense you just kind of have to wait for him to get uh, even with the cornerback in there I might have threw it a little bit early I might have not threw the best pass but you can see he just runs right around the cornerback and it's pretty much gone. Like I said, I, I, I pretty much just wait until he gets... I don't know what it is. It's something about this route. The cornerback doesn't get hands on him. Stefan Diggs is not that fast. But once he gets a little bit of a lead, you pretty much just have to lob it up you know, you can bullet pass if you want to, but lob it to the outside away from the cornerback, away from the safety. And they could typically just click on and sprint and outrun the cornerback. I'm going to do that a couple times. Like I said, there's nothing really to this. Because, like I said, he's just kind of waiting until he gets uh, a little bit of separation. You can see, I mean, I'm pretty much getting going here. And I don't have a very fast receiver on this team. I know a lot of people in previous videos would say I was using Hollywood Brown. Of course, he's going to beat that. I wanted to purposely use a team that didn't really have super fast receivers. Even though Stefan Diggs is a very good receiver, you can see he's getting going instantly every single time. At the very least, he's getting a big play. I probably want to block my running back. That's probably the only thing. But you can see, like I said, there's just nothing. He's just, just out sprinting this guy. And it's because of the way the route's designed. This is a one-play touchdown against pretty much any man coverage as long as there's not a safety over the top. Now, this play has a couple of really good man checkdowns already built into it. The A route and the RB route are very good man routes. I find that the A route's probably best um, because the slant's where, where the user's going to be. Typically, this, this route to the outside, there won't be any user out there. So, this is pretty much the play. Like I said, you can always hit this home run. If you, if you diagnose properly, you're pretty much going to have this home run in the bag pretty much every single time. But ultimately, there's a lot of good man beating routes on this play. I'll also show us against man zero. We'll go with man, uh, we'll go with Overstorm Brave. Pretty much going to be the exact same result. As you can see now, Stefan Diggs is kind of lit up and he just runs right past the guy. And we'll call it a touchdown. But like I said, any man coverage, there's no safety over the top. And that includes man coverages like cover two, where a lot of times they'll, they'll you know, some people like to put their cover two safeties into um, like, uh, you know, curl flats and stuff like that. If they do that, this will be a very easy play. This is where I first found this route was last year when a lot of people did that. They put their outside safeties uh, in the in those type of, of uh, positions. And it really, you know, this is a really explosive play against people like to run defense like that as well. 
well. I know I said this route has mostly success against man coverage, but also has a lot of success against cover four quarters. So let's go and let's pick that one more time. On defensive side, we're going to pick cover four match. Has the exact same effect. You're going to see how this cornerback just doesn't react to it very well, and he lets him run right past him, uh, which is, you know, cover four quarters. This is the only zone coverage where it does that. But pretty much every man coverage that doesn't have a safety over the top and this zone coverage which essentially is a man coverage or at least it reacts similar to a man coverage which is why it does that as you can see it just runs right past the defender so that's it for that play like i said let's attack some zone coverages the next play is going to be the close bills cross we'll start off with cover two now here's another play that needs no adjustments at all especially when it comes to cover two zone you're going to see how this rb route just as long as i have adequate pass pro is going to split those safeties the safety on the left side really follows the crosser so it really gives you an easy one play touchdown against cover two zone let's go ahead and let's go to the replay if you watch this play it's really all about what beasley's doing the route that he's running is just a perfect route when it comes to pulling these zones first thing he does is he slows down uh the mid read he has to react to him then he basically pulls down the safety as well as you can see he pulls that apart and at that point you can see there's nothing out here stopping me i could have bullet and pass led the space as you can see the safety's way out of position now i don't really make any adjustments if you take away the running back say you want to pass block the running back just to get a little extra protection i find that that affects the play you can see how i can still get gone but it's a much tighter window so Think about that. No, if you have a speed advantage, it's going to matter also. So while it doesn't look like it, the, the running back's actually what pulls the cornerback down, and that's what the why the safety covers the crosser. Um, so you can take it away, but if you do that, you probably need a bigger speed advantage than I have when it comes to this receiver because the safety is not going to drop the same, and you can see it's a much tighter window. So just keep that in mind. Now, like I said, this particular play can home run just about any zone coverage. So let's go and let's pick cover three this time. Against cover three, you're going to have to put the A route on a streak, put the B route on a slant. That's pretty much the basic, uh, you know, the bare minimum when it comes to this particular play. Got to buy some time in the pocket. You can see how the RB route's just streaking wide open down the field um, against cover three. He's going to get across for an easy one-play touchdown. This is another play, though, where you don't have to make any adjustments. If you run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field, you don't have to do anything. The setup that I was showing really works from anywhere on the field, but if you have the hash marks, you can basically just do this. You got to buy a little bit of time, but you can see even with Tyron Matthew Little, up he still gets inside of it it ought to be easier if i can buy some time though that's probably the hardest part about this play is you don't necessarily get the most pass pro i find like double teaming um i'm gonna double team this defensive end so i can try to roll in that direction but ultimately this is going to be uh, a really easy play just as long as i can actually get a play to throw the ball as you can see there once again we're getting chased but we're getting passed now the pay receiver in is another play that can be multiple defenses let's go and let's pick that on the defensive side we're just going to go pick uh, we're going to start off with tampa two this is a play that you're probably going to want to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field be aware of that so i'm just going to put the a route on a streak and put the b route on a drag that's all you really have to do the rb routes the play is in a little bit of a wheel route there just wait till he gets past that cornerback and bullet and pass lead outside you don't really have to wait till it gets passed uh but you can typically get a pretty good catch and run if you do I mean, it's, it's really a timing pattern because ultimately the RB route here, the cornerback never really is in play. He's in a back pedal, and it's probably because of the drag. I'm not 100% sure why. He never really flips his hips, but you can see how he's just out of position. So let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, I don't have to wait for him to pass because I know he's going to be passed the second I bullet and pass it away. At that point, if I have a fast enough receiver, I can get up the sideline and be gone with a play like this. This is probably your best man cover two play as well. Let's go and let's pick that. So same setup. You're going to see the RB route here doesn't get jammed at all as he just runs right around it and is instantly open, uh, which, like I said, this is going to be a crazy cover two man concept. As you can watch the replay here, I mean, he just, it's just because of the way this route's set up. He gets chipped off and he's wide open five yards down the field, if not more. I mean, I could have, you know, lobbed it to space there as this is just like an instant open route against this type of defense. So I'll do that again. Like I said, this is like a rub route concept. And we can really just make some big plays. I'm really trying to score here. Like I said, I mean, we got Tyron Matthew out there lurking. But this is a play that's capable of a one-play touchdown. I'm not saying I'm going to get it. Once again, definitely might need a faster guy than Cole Beasley. But if you can steal yards like this, you know, what's what's the bother? Like, it's just a huge play. And it can really have that effect against a lot of different man coverages as well. Against cover one holds a completely different defense. Or a completely different route, rather. The B route. I'm going to put the RB route here on a streak. And now I'm just going to wait. I mean, I have a lot of good check downs. But I'm just waiting for this B route to cross. As you can see, once again, might not have a fast enough receiver. But, you know, same thing, just a different receiver this time. Now, the last play I'm going to show in this video is going to be the choice zig. Let's go and let's pick that. On the defensive side, we're going to start off with cover three. It's more of a cover three and a cover four play. 
All I really have to do is put the A route or the RB route on a streak. I think the A route's probably best. I don't really have to do anything else. The, the B route here will take a little bit of time uh, to come across the formation, uh, but that's about it. Once he does, bullet pass lead away from the safety, and you can see we can have a very big play. Like, I don't have a great receiver out there. Glenn Davis, is it Glenn Davis? He had four, I mean, he had four touchdowns in a playoff game, but uh, he's definitely not... Uh, it's Gabriel Davis, my bad. He's definitely not the guy. Now, the full setup on a play like this would be putting the uh, the, the X route on a 10-yard out route, blocking the running back. Uh, you can actually motion this receiver, which brings the B route in a little bit. That would probably be best considering that, um, you know, that'll just get him across the formation just a little bit faster. And now you can see it just get a little bit more separation. So that's pretty much going to be the full setup uh, against cover three. Go ahead and I'll do that one more time. Like I said, I can time this a little bit better. I said, making that little bit of a motion brings him in, which just gets him across the formation that much faster, which is definitely helpful. So let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, I always roll out. And you can see we're getting across that very easily, although, you know, I could definitely time it better, but you can see how it works. And then last but not least, cover four won't play touchdown, which we haven't really gone over yet. So let's go and let's pick the choice zig one more time. Gonna have to leave the formation. We're gonna have to go over to the dollar and let's pick the cover four drop. So now we're going to have to either smoke or drag the X route. That's pretty much the only thing. Um, and then as far as Beasley concerned, we're just dragging him. And now the B route will be a one-play touchdown against cover four. Got a lot more time to throw this ball. As you can see, he just gets that right over the middle. Once again, not a huge speed advantage, but you can see the plays there to be made. You can see also how he splits the safeties. So you can see how he basically just, you know, it's just, it just splits the field in half. Once he gets inside here, bullet and pass lead away from uh, Tyron Matthew. You can see the other safety is already too far gone. He doesn't really have a, a chance to make the play. Um, I could have just got a little bit, if I'm a little bit faster with receivers, I've got a little bit more, um, you know, of a pass lead inside of it, great. But it's a very easy one play touchdown. So like I said, hit that, uh, you know, put the X route on a smoke, put the A route on a drag. Give that little motion to the line. Now Davis will come across a little bit faster and then block the running back. That's all you really got to do. I mean, you don't really have to block the running back, to be honest with you, because there's not much of a pass rush here. But you can see here once again, boom, right over the top of the safety. Even with a 90-speed receiver, we're hitting a one-play touchdown against cover four. Now, the formation itself is the gun trips TE. If you guys want to see a full breakdown of this offense, that's run plays and pass plays at a future date, Woo! hit the like button let me know in the comment section. For now, it's only going to be on my Patreon on my Join Now community tab. Uh, it's going to be a, it's a really good scheme. And the play itself is the deep end. Now, you're typically going to want to make sure that your best receiver is at this spot here, but I actually have my worst receiver. I'm actually going to be doing this with uh, one of my worst receivers but also one of my fastest receivers in Isaiah McKenzie so we'll go and we'll pick that on the defensive side we're going to start off with cover two that we always do and work our way back now as always this video is brought to you by my coin sponsors at aoeh.com if you guys want to get your mutt team up and you don't want to bother spending money on packs check them out link in the description below and your discount code money to get three percent off it's always guaranteed to be the cheapest coins on the market now the route that I'm going to feature on this play uh, against pretty much every defense is going to be the B route um, I have a couple different options. If I want to on a cover two like this, I can just streak the Y route and the B route here will have a lot of success right over the middle. Um, I don't have to make any motions. You can see a little bit of a tight window with that safety there. I can make that bigger if I motion out the tight end, which is something that I'm going to do quite a bit. So let's go and let's do that. But motioning the tight end over, that's going to pull that safety apart even better. And it's going to make a much bigger throwing window over the middle. So that's something that, like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot anyway. So that might be the best way to handle it against cover two. You can also motion him across, put the A route on a streak. I would find this way would probably be best to motion snap it so he doesn't get uh, zone chucked. But you can see how this receiver can get over the top outside as well, um, just as long as you motion him across. So that route's very good against cover two. Against cover two, man has a lot of success as well. We'll go and pick that. So this play's gonna be the exact same setup. Just put the Y route on a streak. I can motion out the tight end if I want to, but I don't have to. The B route typically gets an inside release. And then I just basically bullet and pass lead right over the middle for an easy one play touchdown right up to the center of the field. You can make that motion across again. Streak my tight end. I give myself a check down with the Y route, say, if I were to do this. But ultimately, I don't want to let him get set because if I do, he'll get jammed. And here, he will not. And then you can see we get outside of that again. So this will beat cover two in a multitude of ways, whether it's man or zone. Next up, we'll do cover three. Obviously, this is popular. Now, this play also beats cover three, but I would say it probably beats cover three the least out of all the coverages. Um, you can't make the motion like I did before against cover two. But all you really want to do now is put the Y route on a, uh, on a slant. 
and then streak the X route. I could make this motion once again. I'd say it's most important against cover three to make this motion. So this is gonna be the setup here. Typically gonna roll out just to buy some time. And then you can see that B route can get going up the middle there, but you can see it's a pretty tight window. I'm also using a pretty uh, average speed receiver. McKenzie is only 92 speed, so that might be why. I know in a lot of videos I typically use Marcus Hollywood Brown and stuff like that, or much faster receivers. I didn't wanna do that just to show because a lot of people say in the comments that these plays only work with fast receivers, but they really work with average receivers. So here we go one more time. Like I said, this B route here, it's gonna get up the center and it's really all about the throw at that point. You can see that was actually a much tighter window. So next up, we got cover four. We're going to do cover four match first. Let's go pick cover quarters. This play is probably, if you have a fast enough receiver anyway, a natural one play touchdown against cover four quarters. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put the Y route here on a 10 yard comeback or a 10 yard curl rather. Uh, as you can see, this is going to be all I need to make this play very explosive against cover four. The B route here gets gone pretty quickly. Like I said, if you have a fast enough receiver, you don't have to make any adjustments because they'll basically just beat this safety or beat this corner anyway. But in my scenario, if I want to get more separation, just putting this guy in a 10-yard curl is the way to go. And you're going to see he basically just gets right past uh, the safety. Is there some sort of communication problems based off of the three routes on the left side there? Is the other safety or cornerbacks in the area? But he doesn't really help out the way that he should. He kind of just lags behind. And then last but not least, we have cover four drop, which is cover four regular. We have to go to the dollar formation to find that. But let's go and let's pick that. This is probably best run from a hash mark to the... Uh, short side of the field, but I can run it like this. I'm just going to put the Y route here on a drag. I'm going to block the A route, and this is pretty much all I'm going to have to do here uh, for this B route to be one play touchdown. I got to wait till it gets across the field, which is probably the biggest issue, but you can see that it does get across eventually. That's why I said running to the short side is probably better. Because if you run to the short side, it doesn't take as long for that receiver to get across. So we're going to do it again. Like I said, block the A route, put the uh, Y route on a drag for a check down. It also pulls down the coverage. And eventually this B route here will get it open a lot quicker over the uh, over the center there. As you can see, it's not quite a catch from one play touchdown, but it gets going. This play also has a really good pass play called the verticals. Now this play here is good against just about any defense. So I'm going to pick random. This play here, all you have to do is put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag, and the Y route on the B route will get open against just about any single defense of the game. I'm also going to block my running back so I can have a little more pass pro from time to time. But you're going to see how this B route here will get open at about 40 yards, which is you know deeper than any zone drop depth you can make. So if your opponent likes to run 25, 30, it's not going to matter when it comes to this particular setup, which is one of the things that I really like about it, um, is it'll get past just about any defense in the game. Here we go once again. Not sure if that's a cover two, but like I said, I'm getting 40 yards deep before uh, I make that pass. Throughout does take a little bit of time to develop, but the most important thing is um, you know, bullet and pass leading away. It takes a little bit of time, but once it gets there, bullet, pass lead away, you can get open against just about any defense game. I don't know why I didn't catch that. <laughs> he was there. I don't know what happened, but I'm not even reading the defense. Here it looks like we have a blitz coming, so I definitely got to be ready, but um, I'm not even reading the defense right now. I'm basically just, you know, making the throw, dropping in, dropping in the hat, and I think we're going to get our touchdown here, although we did not. But like I said, I don't even know what the defenses were. Man or zone, doesn't matter, has the exact same success. It's also got some really good run plays. Um, there's a halfback counter and an inside zone. I'm going to pick the halfback counter. We'll go ahead and we'll continue. I mean, you know, people are going to come out and pretty pass heavy packages. So let's go and let's go with random nickel. I mean, the inside zone's a really good run play. Um, you know, just about any formation is a really good bread and butter play. And most run formations don't really have the counterplay like we have here. I find the counterplay might be the better of the two, but it takes a little bit longer to develop, as you can see right there. It takes a little bit of time. It really depends on where you have your gaps. Like right here, got a man coverage. You know, there's nothing really on this side. So it's nice to have that counter punch to go the opposite direction because most people pretty much will, you know, shift their defense waiting for an inside zone because inside zones are typically the only uh, run plays that people have. You can see right there, not a lot of success where there wasn't a lot of opportunity. But if you have something like this here, like a man coverage, this uh, this counter is going to be very good just as long as I uh, don't run in my lineman like I did there. So between the two, I mean, it really depends on where the, the where the lanes are, like right here, not as much, you know, in the direction of the, the inside zone. So I can definitely run either one, but it's nice to have two run plays in two different directions because, like I said, a lot of gun formations don't have that. Here's another one. We don't really have anybody in the direction of the inside zone. So, you know, this is something you can definitely create a very potent running attack and force your opponent forward uh, before um, you know hitting them over the top with some of the one-play touchdowns and with some of the bombs uh, that I showed earlier in the video. Next up, we got the bench pivot. Against cover three, just put the RB route on a streak. 
And he's going to have a very big play against cover three. Now, this is a tight end right now, but typically you can put your fastest receiver there. I just have my third receiver as my tight end. Uh, this could be an easy one by touchdown. If you really want to spread the defense, you can put the running back out and put him on a streak of some kind just to keep that safety over as much as possible. And then you can see you can have a very big play up the seam because he does get past the cornerback. So a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. And you're really going to have success against any man or zone with the A route as well. As you can see, he's not really covered either. So cover two, cover three, he'll get outside. Cover four also. And the B route is a really good man-beating route. Although you can see here, he's also going to have success getting outside of the cover three. So it's a very hard play to stop. I'm going to run this against a man coverage a couple times. Like I said, very easy play. Just bullet, pass lead outside. You can steal that all game. Next up, we got the bunch trail. Streak the B route. And against cover two zone, uh, Waller will find space in that gap once again. Pretty much every route here beats man. Uh, I would say the RB route is probably the best, but you can see the drag will beat it. The comeback route will beat it. The R the uh, the R one route will beat it. Let's go. Let's do the A route real quick. Like I said, that's something that uh, typically man coverage has a hard time covering. If you want to get the RB route though, you typically against man cover two like a man. You have to streak, and then you can see how this guy will get open even against a cornerback like he's facing. Against cover four, just block everyone. Um, you can you can't block. Um, the B route or the RB route, but you basically block everybody you can block, I should say. And then the X route here is going to get past uh, the safety over the top for another easy one play touchdown. Is that the way for him to get inside the free safety? Go to the replay real quick. Is that the way for this receiver to get inside the free safety here and then bullet and pass lead away because he's well beyond what the strong safety can do to come back and get into the play. Next up, we got the corner strike. Against cover two, pretty much any zone, if you streak the RB route, the B route will typically get open. But against cover two, it's going to be especially, you know, open. But pretty much any zone will have that effect. The table route's a good play against cover three on the left side, cover three and cover four, as typically the cornerback will pull back so far that he won't be in play. But you get an easy one play touchdown just by streaking the RB route and motioning out the B route. That's all you really have to do. It's best run from a hash mark. But you can see we're going to have a lot of success even without doing that as he gets right up the seam there. If I run from a hash mark, I'll probably have a wide open one play touchdown. So I'm going to do that real quick. Run from the hash mark to the open side of the field, and you'll have a lot more success. So we'll do that one more time. And that RB route there, as long as I throw it before that safety has a chance to react, that should be gone, but he's coming over and keeping me from scoring a touchdown. But still. Easily won't, I won't play touchdown. I'm going to put him on a fade this time, see if that really makes a difference. I said I'll help him get out there a little bit further. And I want to score a touchdown, maybe DeVernay is just not fast enough. As you can see, he's almost getting going. Next up, we got the deep corner. All you're going to do is put the, uh, the RB route on a fade. Motion in this receiver here and put him on an out route, a five right out route, and then block the running back. I mean, you can leave him out. It doesn't really matter. But ultimately, um, you know, this is something where you have to buy a lot of time for this B route here to cross. And now you can see you got a one-play touchdown against cover three post-November patch. Also works against man coverage, specifically cover one and cover zero. Let's go and find a cover one. Man, there we go. I mean, that play, you don't really need any adjustments. Just streak the RB route and eventually the B route here, although we're getting a lot of Get a lot of bullied offensive linemen, but you can see how that's going to get across. I don't think I need, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. Cover one man, cover zero. Uh, typically against cover zero, you just want to block your tight end and your running back. Go to motion this guy and put him on a drag. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to set up by time. And we're going to see how we're just going to get across cover one pretty easily. Against cover four quarters, just put the A route on a 10 yard in route. Just an in route, smart routed. 
and the B route here will eventually just, you know, get past it the same way. I mean, I didn't get a good throw or whatever, but you can see that works. You could also put the, if on a 10 yard, you know, you don't have to really even do that. You can just put them on a 10 yard comeback. Works the same way. The B route's gonna get open the same way. I say just basically is gonna run right by the safety, although I'm not getting good throws because I'm not really picking my time, but it does be cover for quarters. Against cover two, against cover two, this is one of the few plays we'll do a different setup. We'll just put the B route here on a streak and the RB route. Typically get open. You see right there, that was a tight window because he didn't really break him. I and that's that's not a very good receiver. That's like a return specialist. But you can see how you can have success there. So as long as he gets into a break a little bit. Or you can just take the A route. Check that. I mean, you really have to read the cornerback. If the cornerback drops back, you take the underneath route. If he drops short, you take the B or you take the RB route. It's really that simple. So the A right here, like I said, I mean, I can take that catch and run all game. You know what I mean? So you're really just reading what the depth of the cornerback is. But against cover two, it can be a big play. Next up, we have the gun bunch verticals. So I'm going to do it again from the other hash mark, delay fade, slide protection. So I'm going to roll in that direction anyway. And here you can see the cornerback glitches out a little bit more from the other hash mark. So maybe it's not specific to a hash mark. But you can see how either way it has success. So this is what you're watching for with this cornerback. Basically, he's just going to uh, dumb out a little bit and go towards the delay fade, leaving this cornerback for an easy, you know, bullet pass it away from the corner for an easy one-play touchdown against cover three post patch. Next up, we have the Z spot. All I really have to do is streak the B route. That's pretty much it. The RB route here is going to be the play against just about any zone coverage. As you can see, he just gets wide open as those uh, safe as the safety gets spread too far apart from the uh, the cornerback. That's really all you have to do. Against cover three, it'll have similar success, but you could also bomb it up for a one-play touchdown. It's going to motion over the running back here, put him into a streak. Uh, you won't have a ton of coverage, but that'll keep the safety away. And then the B route here can have a lot of success right over the top. As you can see, we almost have a one-play touchdown. I'll say it's a one-play touchdown. If I had a little bit more speed, he probably would have been gone. But that's a really easy read. You just have to run it from the hash mark. Next up, we got the middle high low against um, cover two and cover three. You can motion this guy in, put him on a streak. Go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll pick Tampa two. And you're going to see that the, uh, the B route can really have a lot of success outside and be a very big play it could typically be gone except we have the slow the strong curl run this against random defenses all i'm gonna do is put the x route on the street motion them in whenever it lets me put the a route on the drag you can put the rb route and the b route on any number of check downs you want they're not really critical to the play but uh, this y route here i don't know what defense that was but it doesn't really matter man or zone it typically has that effect not against man as much the drag would typically be the man read We'll go ahead and we'll go with uh, cover three. Just give myself uh, something that we can see for you know what the actual zone is instead of guessing after the fact. But, uh, but yeah, you can see once again, same thing. Wide open in the outside because of that drag. Cover two obviously will have that effect. Let's go and let's do that one time. It's going to be the same thing though. Uh, the Y route's going to get open. Although he's getting open a lot easier. He's rounding that route off pretty poorly and it's still wide open. So any man or zone that's going to be successful. Any zone that's going to be successful. Any man's going to be the drag. Next up we have the fake jet pass power. If you have a fast quarterback, this play here can be a huge uh, asset as you can see. I mean, there's just um, a lot of blocking. I mean, you already had the tight end and the running back here. Now you have an additional blocker which is going to be the receiver that's coming across. Now, I find that this play here requires a lot of patience. If you hit the guns, you run to nothing. But if you wait and let your blocking set up, you really tend to have uh, a pretty overpowered blocking scheme. Like I said right here, look how this, this opens up right in the middle here. And then we can hit our guns and then we have an easy 10-yard uh, run. So go ahead, like I said, one more time. Like I said, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait around a little bit. Wait in the pocket, and like I said, boom, just hit those, hit that gun. So, like I said, you gotta have some patience. It's almost like a draw run. Except with the jet touch pass. It's just a good run play. I mean, it's one of the better blocking plays when it comes to uh, 
the setup because you have a tight end and a running back to seal the uh, the point of attack when the receiver comes across. Just put your fastest running back, your fastest receiver here, rather, and uh, make sure that you have, you know, you typically want to run to the open side of the field. I'm not going to motion the guy across, but you can see, I mean, this is a very, uh, you know, well-designed blocking play when it comes to how this sets up against, uh, you know, pretty much anybody. I mean, I, I, you're probably going to have the most consistent runs when it comes to a play like this. Next up, we have the Sluggo scene. Sluggo routes are just good, cover zero, cover one man. Uh, one play touchdown routes as you can see the man coverage just kind of bites it also works against cover four quarters from time to time uh, because they're kind of like matching man principles uh, but that's pretty much the play i mean i'll give myself like a y um, you know, I, I keep, I mean, against cover one, I want to keep the, the Y route doing what he's doing, but give yourself a check down, either with the X route or the A route, just give yourself a drag, but ultimately this play, if you're dialing this up, it's because somebody's in a lot of either man coverage, cover zero, uh, cover one, or cover four quarters, so we can see right there, I probably want to block my running back as well, give myself as much blocking as possible, like I said, I have my check down route, this route here doesn't always necessarily work either, as you can see right there, he didn't really bite, so you have to make sure that you're watching this cornerback, to see that he's actually biting on the route. So let's do that one more time. Like I said, if he doesn't bite, like right here, kind of doesn't bite. So you can throw that up, you can try it out run, but you can see it's pretty much a dead play. Although if you have a speed advantage, you can see I still got in front of him by clicking on. So not a guarantee, but a good play nonetheless. Probably want to run to the open side of the field also. There you can see he gets behind him. The second he gets behind him, you can just lob it up. I'm not bullet passing or anything like that. I'm just lobbing the pass up. Then you have your fullback inside which is a good run play in the opposite direction. Now, I feel like the fullback inside is probably the better of the two as long as that guy holds his block. He kind of just whiffed on the block. But I find that the fullback inside definitely sets up better. So we're gonna do it one more time, like I said. He's gotta, you know, I got, it's best to put him but you can actually block there because this Hitchens is just bowling right through him, which isn't typical. So like I said, right there, he's just shading, he's just shedding Dobbins. So you gotta have a better guy running that. So here I got my actual fullback doing it and you can see he's just gonna blow that up. So anybody with a decent blocking ability is going to create a hole. Uh, you just have to have somebody that can actually, you know, get on that linebacker. So he's right there. He's holding him up, and you can see I'm doing a lot better. I'm not suggesting you put your fullback there, but just somebody who's a little bit of a better blocker. Next up, we get the halfback gut. This is a good run play uh, in in this direction. Uh, the fullback inside is your best run play in the opposite direction. So you really have uh, two plays you should always have in your audibles, and then you can pretty much run them. Um, in conjunction with one another, basically just looking for gaps. If it's a cover two where the safeties play back, like this looks like a cover two, this is going to be the best way to run this play. Just kind of run it inside towards the safety. It's a good uh, run play. It'll pick you up some, you know, nice chunk yardage, about five yards a clip. Next up, we have the slip screen. The running back here underneath is a good route against cover three and cover four. You get a nice catch and run, and you can even beat some man coverages outside. So this play here obviously is designed to go to the screen, but if it's not there for whatever reason, or like I said, you see a cover three or cover four, you can go the opposite direction to the other running back and still have a good, consistent play, or at the very least, a very consistent check down, uh, which is one of the reasons I'm comfortable running a screen play like this when I typically don't run screen plays because you're either getting sacked or the running back doesn't get out of the pattern or something like that. With this play here, I, I don't have to worry about that because I have a really good second option. Like I said, you see the blockers didn't really get out there. So screens can be very inconsistent, but this flat table around the other side is a very consistent check down against pretty much any zone defense. Next up we have the PAF slide. This play here, I mean, your A route's your best man, but your A route and your X battle. Your... This play right here, if it's a zone coverage, the RB route's gonna be the read. You'll get yourself a nice little catch and run, although I ran backwards there by mistake, but that's pretty much gonna be your zone play, cover three, cover four, uh, and then your man beaters are gonna be your A route and your X route, so you pretty much have um, you know, a couple different routes that you could choose from here, although I'm not having the most success running it. So I'm going to do it one more time. Like I said, the X route should be just about everything, so that's your last play. Here, I thought that was a man coverage, but this guy was just streaking right over and over the middle. So you're pretty much just reading that running back to the receiver, um, crossing, and then obviously your last. be your RB route, your A route, then your X route. That's your reprogression. Next up, we got the PA will switch. Let's play here against cover three. Uh, the Y route here is going to be a good play. Uh, I find it's best to motion the Y route out and put yourself, I would put myself a little bit of a better, um, you know, speed back than, than Bell, but this is fine. So we're just going to go, we're going to do this one more time. Like I said, motion this guy out will give you the biggest advantage into the flat. Although, like I said, this guy's not what he was. So I'm not necessarily completing a lot. Next up, we have the bench halfback angle. Against cover two, just put the A route on a drag and put the Y route on a streak. That's all you really have to do. And then the X route, I mean, the A route's going to get open, but the X route's going to be the big play. 
Don't know why that took so long to get out of the quarterback's hands, but you can see he's wide open in the gap. Against cover three, you can do the same thing. And it's going to be the same result. The X route is going to be open underneath. So it's like I said, any zone coverage is going to have that effect. Against man cover two, it's going to be the same thing. Pretty much any man coverage. The running back, though, is a really good route. Uh, but you can see how, I mean, just as long as he gets through the trash, there's a lot of opportunity. That route's going to get open against just about any defense. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's a good play. Best against cover two man uh, or cover two zone because the safeties play back. So you're going to have the most run room space inside. But ultimately, I mean, this is a good play against just about any spread formation. Next up, we have the jet touch pass. So another play that's going to be best against cover three or four zone or man coverages. Ultimately, this is another play you're going to probably end up doing a little backtracking, but it's a very good play to keep your opponent honest uh, and to have them expecting, you know, a possible explosive run play. You want to make sure you run to the open side of the field like I am here, and you also want to have your fastest receiver, which I don't have. But uh, you can see I'm still having success. Next up, we have the red zone scissors. Just a good man coverage play. Pretty much any man coverage, this running back uh, will beat. It's just just how this route is. Every 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 play it's in, uh, it's just a good man beating route. So just remember that. If anybody's running man coverage, this is the way to go. Um, you can always block your tight end if it's like a man zero blitz, but the running back is the play. Next up, we have the bench. When it comes to the bench, these routes will beat. You know, man coverage won't have a lot of success against bench. So basically, the Y route or the X route will have a lot of success. You can get more success if you try to stack to one side rather than running both sides. Like if I motion over Kittle or Ayuk here and just put them on a streak, that typically will give me even more success when it comes to uh, these concepts. So I'm gonna cover four now, which I didn't mean to do, so we'll just throw that ball away. But uh, we gotta go back to cover two. I mean, really any man coverage, but cover two especially because you have the safeties on each side and you want to be able to pull those guys back. I mean, I find that doing it with a zig is even better since I'm trying to isolate man coverages. You see the zig route got really wide open, but I'm going for the bigger plays. You can see right there, you did get a little bit of separation. Like I said, it's not the best man concept, but the same setup through any zone coverage will be successful. So we're going to do that with a zone. Typically against zone, I like to flat the X route instead of having him in that out route because that'll pull that cornerback down even quicker. And you can see here, I mean, he's getting a lot of pressure or a lot of press off of that, uh, off of that, um, uh, I don't know if it was a linebacker or what, but you can see it's still a very big play regardless. Go to cover three, do the same setup. Cover three, you can leave that X or you can flat him. It doesn't matter. I mean, they're, they're both going to work and have success. You see the flat pulls it down a lot quicker, though. And like I said, that you know, pretty much any zone, these 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 corner routes really have a lot of success, success against zone. Next up, we have the drive corner. It's another really good play against cover four quarters. As you can see, it kind of just glitches out the safety. It's going to have a lot of success against any man similar style of play. I find it's best to motion. I'll block the running back. The running back would be good against cover three and cover four because it's a flat beating route. But against um, man coverages like man cover two, motion over the B route, put them on a streak. And the Y route here can have a lot of success over the top of that, um, which is a play. I put this out you know, multiple years in a row. It's a really explosive play against man coverages and against um, cover four. Against man cover two, just streak the X route. I'm sorry, not man cover two, zone cover two, whatever. Streak the X route, same result, another one play touchdown. So against man, man cover one, man cover two, cover two zone, uh, and cover four quarters is a one play touchdown to the same route. Um, like I said, I can show off some of these other routes. These drags are pretty good, the X route's pretty good. You see right here, I mean, that's that's a, that's a tough one, you know, against cover two man because they typically cover outside. They, get, they don't like to give you outside release when it comes to cover two man. But against cover one, it's a little bit of a different story. Cover one is the one coverage that I feel like this Y route, it covers this Y route pretty good. But you can still, you still have, if you have a speed advantage, you can still make that happen. But I don't have a ton of speed with, with Samuel. Next up, we have the PA cross against cover two. If you just streak everybody, the, uh, the B route here will have success in the cover two gap. And if you have a lot of catch and run space, which I didn't have, you can get an easy one play touchdown there. Against man coverage, 
the X route is a good route. Once again, he'll get outside. It takes a little while, but you can see he gets outside and you have another big play. So those are your, you know, your right. The B route, cover two. The X route, cover one. Even the Y route's a good man beater, but I'm not really going to spend too much time on that. It's just a good check down. I'm not going to change that too much. Cover three X, I got to move the ball over for cover three. I forgot to mention against cover four quarters, if you motion this guy out, he will have success. You just isolate him with a cover four corner. This is cover four match, not cover four. Look at right there. He's getting triple teamed, and he still gets open. My worst receiver is getting triple teamed and gets open against cover four quarters. Both routes can have success, really. I'll, I'll do the same thing with the B route. Like I said, even with that short field, you'll see he isolates it and still gets it open. So just as long as you have a decent or decent receiver, that's why I went and ran a short side there. So against cover three, got to remember to put it in cover three. Go ahead and do that one more time. Like I said, that wire out there, once that guy spreads, once that quarterback spreads, you can beat that right at the seam. A little, a little bit more speed would be nice, but that's as good as I have it. We'll do that with the other side too. But we'll do that again. Exact same setup. Just a slightly different look. And the same result. As you can see, you know, one play touchdown to both sides of the cover three seam. Against cover four drop, we'll just play sticks. Switch to the other side because the X route's the route. Block my running back. And we're going to have that same result with the same route against cover four. So really any zone covers, that's going to have success. We'll go ahead and we'll do that against cover three. Because when I say any zone, I really didn't check cover three. So I'll do that one more time. I said, I mean, obviously, this, this, this cover three doesn't cover anything. Because I, I, the one play touchdown's there and the shorter route's there. So that covers nothing. Except we have the slot post. It's a really good cover three play. Just streak your slot receivers, motion out the X route. And that Y route is going to be a very big play because it just creates a huge amount of space. So, you know, it's it's a big scene play. It's not always going to be a one play touchdown. A little bit more speed would be helpful. But ultimately, this is a very big play against, um, you know, pretty much against any, uh, any cover three, as long as you do this setup and just streak everybody. Running back's a good check down. Next up, we got the fade smash. This is a good play against cover two, man. Just streak the A route. Go ahead and we'll just let this play, let these guys set up on defense. But yeah, the uh, the Y route here can have a lot of success beating it to the corner. So, you know, that's all you really need to do. So, you know, this is there's not a lot of other really good routes here. But based off the fact that man cover two a lot of times protect against inside releases, that's what makes the Y route such a good play now if you throw it too early you can get a little bit of trouble and i also didn't float it i want to float that as much as possible but it still worked out against uh tampa two it's gonna go over and motion over a yook streak everybody and this is going to be a big play against cover two as well let's go let's do this one more time here so that wire out you know basically just getting outside against pretty much any cover two that's going to be the play Against cover three, same setup, motion this guy across, streak everybody. Let's actually put the cover three on. And we're gonna have a big play against cover three. If we get that B route right at the seam there. And like I said, worst receiver once again. Actually, no, I think that's Debo Samuel. So you can see it's still a good play. Could probably get a little bit more separation against that cover three if you fade that receiver. Let's go, let's do that again. Like I said, now I got him on a fade. So he should get a little bit more space outside the cornerback and outside the receiver. You see right there, it's a little bit more space. So it doesn't really matter, fade or streak, still a really good play. Against cover four, regular cover four, do the exact same setup. Although realistically, here I'd probably want to like drag or something like that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, all the streaks aren't really going to do anything. But the Y route here, once again, it's outside of cover four. So that route there is going to beat most things. Except we have the inside zone. So it's the best run play in this formation. You can see a lot of times that receiver will come over and seal that linebacker. So if he does that properly, it's definitely a big help. Sometimes the, uh, the, the, the 
guard will get off to that level too. But you can see it's a very successful inside run, just as long as you're looking at a favorable defense, which is either matching or less. Next up out of the trailway flex with the PA crossers. The tight end's a good man coverage beater. That's really the only um, thing that makes this play different than a lot of other plays that I put out, where basically, you know, this is a good man being route, especially if you have a good tight end. But ultimately, I want to run this against random plays and just put the tight end on the street, put the wire out of drag, and these uh, crossers will get open against just about any defense. Uh, you just basically watch, I mean, the drag and the, and the deep crosser will both pretty much get open. So you're just basically watching the high-low routes. Man or zone, doesn't really matter. You're just watching the, the deep crosser and the drag. Uh, as you can see here, I mean, I accidentally hit the wrong button, but they were both open. If I go to the replay, you can see that both of the receivers were open. It doesn't really matter the defense. Let's go and let's do it again. I like to block the running back, too, because I don't, I don't want that play action to get in the way. Here we go once again. It looks like a couple of quarters uh, matching principles. It still gets open. It doesn't really matter. These crossers kill all that. Next up, we have the close Bills cross. This play, you don't need any adjustments. It's really good against man coverage, particularly, but it's also really good against zones. As you can see, these crossing routes over the middle here just have a lot of success. You can go either way with it. The X route is also really good. And he's going to be a better receiver, although you got to get a good throw. I'm not really getting good throws here. But you can see, if you, as long as you can buy time in the pocket, pretty much both those guys are open. And then the running back's a pretty good check down uh, against his own coverages, like cover three and cover four. There should be nobody around for the dump down and catch and run to the running back. Close X fade. Any man cover one or man cover zero, the X route's gonna get open right, right away. So, I mean, you have good checkdowns with the slant and the, the A route are both good checkdowns against man, but ultimately this X route here just gets right behind the defense. It just runs right past him because of like the looping angle that the uh, the cornerback takes. He doesn't get jammed or pressed or redirected. So he really just kind of loops right around uh, any man zero or man cover one. Now, like I said, you also have some really good checkdowns, but you're not really gonna need it because that first route gets open so quickly. It also includes cover four quarters, which reacts a lot like a man coverage. As you can see here, we have the exact same effect. So any man coverage other than man cover two and cover four quarters is an easy, instant, one play touchdown. Next up, we got the deep end. Just put the Y route on a streak and put the A route on a delay fade. That's all you really have to do. And the B route, uh, although I did forget to slide my protection, but the B route gets right behind uh, any cover two safety. You can see right there. That was the most important part though. I forgot that you have to slide your protection. Delay fades can be kind of glitchy, uh, but slide your protection to the right. This is a block your, or put your uh, A route on delay fade, streak the Y route. And against cover two, this B route here is gonna get over the top of it. Like he will against most defenses. That's pretty much going to be the theme here. <coughs> also works against cover three. Same setup, although you can also put the A route on a five yard out route. And that will have success as well. As you can see right here, once again, we're getting over the top, although it's a tight window. Like I said, delay fades better. Sliding important is, is important when it comes to the delay fade because they'll they'll let a blocker come in free or let a defensive come in free. You also want to make sure you have a slow tight end, as you can see. If that tight end gets up the field too quick, he actually pulls the defender back. But you can see he gets past cover three. Exact same setup, although against man cover one, you don't even have to do that. You can just basically, you know, the B route will get across. So you just have to do the streak against man coverage, against man cover one. Cup for quarters doesn't really require any adjustments as the B route will just get past the coverage. You just need a speed, you know, a little bit more speed. That's all you really need. And it'll twist up the, the safeties. Cover four zone is a little different though. So we'll go and pick dollar, cup for drop and tame. Again, it's cover four. If you just run to the short side, block your, your tight end. And the B route here, once he gets uh, basically parallel with the with the safety, we'll just get right past him. So run from the, the hash mark to the short side of the field. Except we have the RPO alert bubble. The run play is going to be best against cover two, man or zone, and I'd say the bubble is going to be best against any zone coverage. Pretty much any zone coverage, uh, the B route typically finds a way underneath. So you can see right there, I mean, you're going to have a blocking advantage. You're going to have three receivers to two defenders typically. So you're always going to have um, an extra defender. So you can see right here, the B route is going to get uh, free. Only you're going to have the safety to beat. Like I said, that's because it's a zone coverage. So you can see we get a very easy catch and run. Next up, we have the inside zone. 
Another good run play against uh, cover two, man, or zone because the safeties typically play back. If you have a spread defense, this is going to be just like a guaranteed five yards. It's one of the better run plays in pretty much any gun formation is going to be the inside zone. Next up, we have the PA cross. All these routes are good man beaters, but I would say the best one is the X route because you're throwing outside, you're not throwing over the middle where there's a possible user. Uh, but that's pretty much a read. I would take that first, and then if that's not open, the RB route will get open over the middle. But like I said, that's the one that's most likely to be users. You can see we had some tight covers there anyway. Uh, so typically, that'll be your third best receiver. DeVernay is not really a really good receiver. And then the B route, which like I said, that'll get open as well on the other side. So all routes beat man. That's pretty much the only usefulness for this play. Next up, we have the 95 Willie. If it's a man coverage like this, you don't really have anybody outside here. I'd say flip it and run to the open side of the field where there's no cornerback. But typically against zone coverages, this play is going to be best uh, run to the short side. As you can see right there, I kind of ran on my blocker. That would have been a much bigger run. But pretty much any zone coverage run to that side, any man coverage, flip it and try to take it outside. Because you can see once you get past that first wave of tackles, there was nobody there. I got shoestring tackled. But uh, let's go on this run a few more times. Like I said, zone coverage, you can see the receivers force the uh, linebacker to be out a lot wider than he wants to be. And then you can see, you know, we can just get that lane very easily. And then obviously, like right here, once again, we got another zone coverage. Pretty easy read. Like I said, there's nothing really um, stopping me, but my own blockers are uh, running up their backs. Next up, we got the fullback flare. Against cover two, just put the A route or the tight end on a delay fade. You probably want your slowest tight end doing that route as well. Uh, you typically have to also put um, your, um, you have to slide your protection to the right because the delay fade can kind of mess that up. But you can see how it's a one play touchdown against cover two zone. Again, it's cover two man motion this receiver cross and put the A route on streak. And you'll see how this B route here can be a big play outside of the man coverage you can see we get up one play touchdown against cover two man that way against cover three just motion this receiver across and then block the tight end slide my protection now i have a cover three one play touchdown so i always roll out i think it helps you see a bullet pass lead away. That's a tight window throw, but you can see even with a, a lowly rated receiver like uh, Isaiah McKenzie, we still get the one-play touchdown. We're just going to put the X route here on a 10-yard curl. And I'll get a, the B route on a one-on-one -on -one with the safety, who he will typically, you know, pretty much any receiver should beat a safety one-on-one. -on -one. If you have a bigger spade advantage, he'll get it open even more. Next up, we got the jet sweep. another play i mean you want to have your fast receiver here but if it's a cover three or um you know any man coverage where there's no cornerback out here this is gonna be the best opportunity to run this i think it's probably gonna be best just to stay save this for man coverages if you get any man coverage where there's just no cornerback out here at all uh, like this one here doesn't even have that um, this is still gonna be your best opportunity anytime that uh you know cover three the cornerback drops back man coverage a lot of times there's no defender right, pre-snap so it makes that play best to run it there next up we got the power alert bubble this is another play where if it's a zone coverage, I'd throw it to the bubble. If it's a man coverage, I would run it uh, as you'll have the same uh, success where there's no cornerback outside. So pretty much any man or zone. A man coverage would look something like this. This would be a scenario where you're going to want to try to run it. This is like an all-out man blitz, but you can see if I can get outside of this, there's nothing but success out here. So against man, run it. Against zone, throw it to the screen. Next up, we get the halfback counter weak. This play here is best if they're shifting too much to the uh, the two tight end side. Then you just hit them with a counter. Um, this play can have a lot of success. You ha I, I have an issue with overrunning my blockers a little bit. But as long as you wait for that pulling uh, fullback or guard to do their job, you typically have uh, a lot of success. There's typically a very good lane. So anytime that they're over shift to the right or you have a wide gap, between a defensive end and a defensive tackle on the left side there. As you can see, I want the left end or the outside linebacker 
to have outside shoulder over my guard over my tackle because typically that's what takes him out of the play when the pulling guard comes around so those are the two looks you're going to want to see the most when it comes to running this defensive play like right here the defensive uh outside linebacker is too close to that defensive end i'm not going to get the spacing i typically want although there you can see we still had some success so that's you, know, you can have success against a lot of different looks i just find it's best to do it against the wider looks or the overshifted looks to the tight ends next up we have the halfback power O. Oh. I typically want to flip this. The more spread the defensive alignment, the better. Uh, and then basically just treat it like almost like a counterplay. Just kind of leave that, that lead blocker coming around. Typically does a good job. Um, it's going to be best if the uh, defensive end is out really wide, which typically people want to try to maintain the outside edge. So this is going to be a perfect counter to that. Here we have a blitzer. This will probably be a good look because the blitzer will probably take himself out of the play. But realistically, that's something where, you know, you, you want to, this is going to be best against... A um, little bit more vanilla defense is necessarily blitzing is not necessarily the best way to run this. So here we don't have any gaps. I'm going to run it anyway. They said that defensive end typically takes himself out of the play. And then, you know, you're pulling guards. got to block somebody. Uh, typically, the faster your guard, the better. There he came around. Really didn't do much at all. But you can see if you have holes, um, it's just going to cr create those holes, widen those holes even bigger. Kind of like an 0-1 trap play. Next up, we have the PA Scissors. Against uh, pretty much any defense, if you motion this guy in here and put him on a drag uh, and then put the B route on a streak, you pretty much have a high-low concept with the A route and the X route. Um, where, like I said, I don't really care what the defense is. One of these two will get open pretty much every time. Although there, I threw to the wrong button. I accidentally hit the X button. I was trying to hit the A button, but they're both open, if that's the point. Um, you don't have to motion in the X route either. You can just put him on a drag. But I find it works best if he gets across the field. Timing-wise, it works best if he gets across the field a little bit quicker. Uh, ultimately, this motion can be a little bit of a tell, so just make sure that um, you know, you're basically, um, as we get a really tight throw there, make sure that you're uh, motioning in the receiver sometimes in some of the run plays just so it's not so obvious that this is um, you know, a, uh, a pass play based off of the motion. You don't want to make it the only option. So here we have a, another one. Another man coverage and even the deep route gets open. So against any man or zone, the deep route or the short route will have success, making this a very hard to stop pass play. The running back, you don't really have to. I don't really look at him much. So you can take him away entirely if you think you need additional blocking. And then you can see, like I said, we're. I mean, we have a good tight end, so we're pretty much just getting that deep route, whether it's man or zone. Except we have the PA cross. This play is a natural one play touchdown against cover three. I like to typically give myself a little more blocking like one of the running backs, but you can see this cornerback out here doesn't really react to the deeper route. He kind of reacts to the fullback in his area. I'll go to the replay there. I didn't get the one-play touchdown, but we'll go to the replay just to show you what I'm talking about. This guy here uh, typically just hesitates out in space. He doesn't get that same type of reaction where he just kind of shoots to the crosser like he does in some, uh, you know, post-patch, uh, you know, plays, but still very, very, um, a very explosive play against cover three. We're going to run that again. We're going to do it again. I don't have my fastest receiver running this. And I could block that Y route. That's the one thing. i got a pass lead up a little bit. But you can see there's a very easy seam there against cover three defense if you run this from the open sideline, uh, the open hash mark to the open side of the field. Against cover four, you can have a big play also. Just block the running back. I'll slide my protection to the right because I'm going to probably roll in that direction. And then you can see how once this receiver crosses the safety, he's behind the cornerback. So you can get a very, you can get a one-play touchdown. If I had Marcus Howard Brown running, it'd be even easier. The crossing routes are all very good plays against man or zone two. You can motion this guy and just put him on a streak and just run the A and the B route, run high to low. Um, you know across the field too and one of them will get open pretty much every time Next up we got the PA sale Okay, this is about any man or zone You can put this B route here on a streak and the tight end will do a pretty good job of getting outside of it uh, That was a band coverage, uh, but ultimately like I said any man or zone that uh, the cornerback out here will typically follow that streak This will probably be hopefully get some cover threes and cover fours Although here that just looked like a couple four quarters and then the B route went right past that safety So got to keep an eye on that that looked like a couple four quarters. You can definitely have success there don't do that again. Like I said, I'm typically staring towards the A route, though. There we go. We get that looks like a cover three, um, and we just get a very easy play. Against cover three, you can just streak the B route, and a lot of times you run from the hash mark to the open side of the field. This B route will get right up the seam as long as the safety's not right over the top of it. If he's center field, it might be an issue, but ultimately, if he's all the way to the end or to the left like this, it's not. 
This is by the Iform Z Close with the wide receiver curl. The B route here is a very good man beater. You just have to wait until it gets outside the cornerback and the bullet and pass it outside. It's not typically going to get you more than five, maybe ten yards. You might be able to get a catch and run and turn up a little bit. But for the most part, this is just a really good spot play. Uh, if you need a certain amount of yards, this should get it just about every time we get man coverage. <clears throat> Next up, we got the inside zone weak. This is a good complimentary run play. You can motion across the uh, the B receiver just like in some of the other plays in the formation if you want to. And then you can see how it'll give you a little bit of a blocking advantage as he picks up uh, the defender there. But if a defender motions with him, sometimes if it's a man coverage, it doesn't make sense to do that. Like here you see slot cornerback motions across. Um, I still find it's helpful, but ultimately, like I said, you're kind of you're, you're gaining a defender while gain, you know you're not really gaining a blocking advantage because you're bringing a defender across. So to me, it's best sometimes just to run as is and then follow that fullback. You can see it springs you for a good run. This is an inside run play first, but you definitely have the ability to take it out wide. Uh, depending on what you're looking at if it's like a cover three or cover four that's gonna be your best approach if it's a cover two like this is it's best to run it inside except we got the motion counter y it's another good run play to look like uh the pass play with the motion uh, but ultimately it's uh, it's a good uh, play to run with that i still think the pass play is probably the best play with that motion but this is something that you can do um, to accentuate that, as you can see here, we have like a cover three. This will be a scenario where I'm definitely going to want to try to take it outside because the cornerback is typically playing off. And then you can see you can have a lot of success with a run play like this. Next up, we have the PA boot. It's another good play against random defenses. Uh, you're just going to kind of go from front to back. The RB route is probably your best man beater. As you can see right there, we had a man coverage uh, with probably their best man defender, which is Tyron Matthews. Still gets across it. So that would be your man beating route. Uh, but zones, you're just kind of reading front to back there. I should have hit him again, although I did go with the short route. Like I said, you just kind of want to wait, go from the shortest route to the deepest route. One of those uh, routes will be open just about every time. And then, like I said, if you have a man coverage, which is what this looks like here, although that looked like it was probably a cover four quarters or something like that, that's going to be your best route. It's one of the few plays where, I mean, the B route isn't really a play too often, but you can see right here, this is something where uh, that was probably cover two zone where he plays back, and then you can see we get that route. I probably should have low through it, but still. Next up, we got the RPO read flat wheel. Now, if it's a cover two man or zone, the B route will be a big play, mostly because um, it just gets to where uh, this cornerback doesn't foul anymore. You can just basically bullet and pass it outside. So then you just have a one-on-one -on -one with this safety. You can see that's a very easy play against cover two. Against cover three and cover four, the best play is typically going to be to the tight end. So we'll see, he goes across there, but they sit down on him, and then the tight end underneath is pretty much always going to be open for a good catch and run. So that's your cover three and your cover four. Your other route is going to be your cover two. The, you can also hand it off to the A route, or to the uh, the running back, I should say, and go the opposite direction, which is pretty cool. So you really can attack the entire field, but you do have that read option. Which is to say, if this defensive end crashes down, you can just hold it with the quarterback and just run with it. Which is also a very good play in the opposite direction. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with this particular play. It's a very glitchy play. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. So another play that's going to be best against like cover four, cover three defenses. You can see a lot of times this defensive end can't be let free. So you're going to have to get around that particular player. So just keep that in mind that this is a wide looping run like I'm, you don't want to run it straight across you have to run it around this defensive player who a lot of times isn't fast enough or agile enough to, to react so just keep that in mind you do have a free defender there it's just taken for granted that you're going to loop around him so try to run back a little bit instead of running straight forward you can see right there he's nowhere near in line uh and it would probably take a good user defender to be on that spot waiting for it to stop it next up we have the read option this play here, I mean, if you have spacing right in front of you, because it's a spread formation, a lot of times it's best to hand it off with the uh, with the running back. But it all really depends on what the defensive end does. This is pretty much just a replay to that left defensive end right in front of you. So if he crashes in, you're supposed to hold it and keep it with the quarterback. And if you have a good mobile quarterback, you can see how you can get some nice plays. Uh, as I probably could have broken for a touchdown there. So definitely a good play if you're a spread, run and gun type of player. Next up, we have the RPO read flat wheel. If it's a cover two, I would say the Y route is going to be the best play. But ultimately, this RB route is just very good against just about any zone coverage and a lot of man coverage as well. This is a play that um, really 
I find uh, I mean, right here I'm going to take off with it because it is a read option but you can see the, the, the receiver motion across got tackled so that's something to watch out for but you have a lot of good options and you can hand it off as well I mean I'm not typically the type to hand off as you can see you can go the opposite direction with a very explosive play so it looks like the play is pretty much going in one direction but you always have the opportunity to bring it back the other way with the run play and then you can see the run play blows open some pretty big holes so you have a lot of really good options but I would definitely keep it within the RB route the running back and the quarterback that's pretty much going to be the way that I would handle it you can see right here I mean, you just have an opportunity to basically throw it ahead uh, and you know you just have a, a wide looping series of run plays either right to left the run play is obviously a big play to the right the uh, I mean there, it's a big play too. I mean there's a lot of gaps when I run this ball and then you also have the ability to hold it with your quarterback or throw it out I mean if you hold it with your quarterback you can run it a little bit change your mind and throw it out which is really cool which is not something you typically can do so it's a very glitchy play <coughs> You also have a pretty good cover two concept here, which is the Y route. That's a really good cover two concept, also a good man concept. So here we have a cover two man. And you can see this RB route, like I said, if he gets tackled, that sucks. But you still have some good plays down the field. I mean, I really want to, he's not getting followed by the motion. So you can see a lot of times you can just throw it, even in a man coverage, you can throw it to his RB route as long as he doesn't get tackled, like he's been getting tackled. But it doesn't matter, because like I said, you have other routes. You have some really good routes down the field against pretty much any man coverage that route should get open or cover two. This RB route is going to be especially good, though, against like cover three and cover four. But like I said, treat this like a running play and treat this pitch, this almost like a pitch out. Next up out of the pistol spread, we got the... Zone alert bubble. Against uh, cover three and four zones, the uh, the wire route, I mean, this is a cover two. Pretty much any zone coverage, I think bubble screens work pretty good against now. Ultimately, the run play is gonna be best against cover two though. As you can see, there's typically, um, you're gonna need space for the gap. But ultimately, this is a single read. Inside cover two, man or zone. Uh, outside would be best against zone. Sometimes, man, I've, had, I've seen people have success doing the, the bubble screens with man coverage, but I'm not one of them. I think it's best to run against zone. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. Against man, run it as is. If there's no cornerback outside against zone, you want to flip it with the right stick and run it back behind the receivers. Running it behind the receivers will give you the best blocking advantages. Some, most times you'll have you know, three receivers to maybe only like two blockers. Next up, out of the pistol trips, you have the PA boot. Just streak the A route. You're going to read your coverages from the back pretty much every uh, route here gets open no matter what you're looking at as you can see right here that's probably a cover three we have the you know the middle route will probably get open the most uh, and then the b route is going to be your your a your check down and your your man coverage beater your most successful man coverage beater as you can see right there i can take that but both of those routes are open pretty much the first two routes will be open against just about any defense you see the only real issue at that point then becomes blocking so here we go one more time like i said i'm not sure what that was it doesn't really matter i'm just kind of making a space for you as they cross the field Except we have the X dagger. Against cover two, pretty much any defense, you're just gonna want to put the uh, tight end on a block and release flat. Streak the B route and put the X route on a slant. With this setup here, the um, the Y route will get behind just about any defense. As you can see right here, we got a cover two zone. It's right over the top of uh, Tyron Matthew. Against cover two, man, pretty much any defense, you don't really have to put Andrews on a route. Uh, but against cover two especially, I probably want to leave him in the block because ultimately this is what's going to keep uh, Tyron Matthew down. As you can see, once again, we just get right over the top of that cover two man safety as well. And then against cover three. Same thing. It didn't work out the same way. I typically want to roll in the direction of the throw just because... Um, you know, that's just, that's best for me as far as shortening the throw. And I also think it pulls the cornerback down. Against cover four, which we'll have to, uh, we'll go cover four quarters first since it's in this formation. Against cover four quarters though, you don't have to make any adjustments. You pretty much get the one-on-one -on -one that you want already. Um, although I don't even know what happens because it really just glitches out. I mean, there's a lot of, of jostling for position going on there. Against cover four quarters, all you have to do is put the B route on the streak. Uh, and that's going to pretty much get you the, the, you know, the Y route where you want it, which is just wide open streaking down the field. I mean, this one here, you probably don't have to make adjustments, to be honest. Cup for cores is kind of broken against this play. 
And then last but not least, we have cover four drop. So motion this guy across, put him on a drag, and that's all you really have to do. And this is a one play touchdown against cover four. Sometimes I like to motion snap him, but it doesn't really matter. As you're gonna see this wire out here, it's right over the top of the safety uh, for a one play touchdown. Now you could draw that safety down more. I find that the comeback route and the delay fade combo work a lot better. So let's go and let's do that one more time. Like I said, motion snapping this is all just to draw that safety down. And then boom, right, right over the top, as you can see, he gets uh, gets behind that uh, cover for safety. Next up, we have the RPO zone alert bubble. Against cover two, it's gonna be best to hand it off against things like cover three, cover four, it's gonna be best to throw it over here uh, based off the fact that the cornerbacks play back and there'll be no position to make the stop. Against cover two, however, the safeties play back, that'll give you the best opportunity for the run play. So cover two banner zone, run out the middle, everything else pretty much uh, I'm gonna throw it outside to the B route. Next up, we got the halfback wham. It's just a good inside run play in this formation. Uh, I find it's going to be best to run against uh, cover two man or zone with the safeties play back. They'll give you the best opportunity on inside runs. Next up, we got the Z option. I find it's best on a play like this to motion this receiver out just to isolate him on the cornerback and smart route it. You can also block the running back, block the RB route if you need to, put the A route in a drag for a check down, things like that. But ultimately, um, this X route here pretty much gets open instantly against pretty much any man coverage. I said you don't have to uh, smart route him, you can leave him as is. I still find it's best to give yourself some sort of check down and a drag though. That's going to be one of the most important things because this route here, to me it works no matter what, but you're going to see that um, it's still best sometimes to have a check down. If it's an all-out man blitz, you're going to need that. Next up, we get the halfback count a week. It's just a good run play. I mean, you have a fullback in the formation. Um, you know, a lot of times you're pretty much just left with a straight ahead run. At least here you have an option to go the opposite way if your opponent uh, is, is spending too much time paying attention to the bunch. This is probably one of the better counter run plays to run um, in the formation. So the, sh the shift gives them a little bit of time to, uh, to change their defense, but ultimately it's a very successful run play. Next up we have the PA boot slide. It's so another play you can run against random defenses. Uh, the you know the B route, I mean, especially that's going to be something that if it's like a cover two man, we've gone over quite a bit. That um, that's something that you can just low throw, bullet pass inside. You'll have a lot of success if you know it's a cover two man. I would say it might be best to put the RB route on a streak, uh, but this is definitely not a cover two man. This is definitely going to be a man blitz. So the X route here is going to be one of the better um, plays against man, especially if it's a man blitz because it's pretty quick. But ultimately, the A route's a really good crosser against man. Uh, the RB route here is a good crosser against man. You can see right here, it looks like we have a man cover one, and uh, we have the receiver just streaking across. So, you know, this is a play where it's really a front to back read if it's a man or zone, once again, really between the RB route and the A route. Here, it looks like we have cover three, might have been a cover three blitz. Uh, we just have success right over the middle. So, ultimately, you're kind of reading uh, the RB route and the A route for the most part. The X route should check down against man, and the B route should cover two man beater. Um, then you have, like I said, the RB route here. That's really, you know, any cover three or cover four, I'm typically looking for him because there's another, never typically coverage underneath. Next up out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. This play here, I mean, it's there's no real adjustments. Against cover three or cover four, you're gonna have the most success. Next up, we got the verticals. It's a really good cover three play, but you could also run this against just about any play. Uh, all you have to do is put the A route on the streak and the B route on a drag, uh, which I didn't really do. Let's do it against the RB route on the streak, my bad, and the B route on a drag. Uh, you really have the same type of crossing route uh, setup that I've been uh, going over in a lot of my different uh, plays. But, you know, that's pretty much something you could run against just about any defense. That was a cover four quarters. Um, we could go ahead and do that against man. Man cover two. Let's go let's do it again. If I didn't do that right, there we go. So like I said, I mean, the B route's already open, the A route crosses, but that's something. I'm not suggesting that route will always be there, but either that or the drag will be there. Um, we'll go and we'll do that against something like a cover three. Let's go and do that one more time. Like I said, this is something where everything should clear. The B route's already open, the A route's coming open, although realistically there, that was something I probably should have threw a little bit quicker. But um, you can see it doesn't really matter. That's something that you can do. It's a pretty easy setup. 
um, against just about any defense. But if you have a cover three, this is probably best against cover three because the RB route really just gets open right at the cover three seam. It's just the way it discovers. So you can motion out the uh, the outside receiver to try to create more separation, but it's not something you really have to do. It's something that I just do through habit, and it kind of gives away where you're going. But against cover three, especially this RB route, is typically going to get open right at the seam. Now against cover two, you just have to streak the RB route and the B route will get open above the cornerback here. Um, you definitely want to run that from the open side of the field. As you can see, I run out of space pretty quick. You can get some explosive catch and run type of plays as long as you run it from the open side of the field. So we'll go and we'll do that again. Cover two, Tampa two, put this RB route in a streak, get this B route here over the top and like I said you get some really big catch and runs safety catches up we got a superstar out there but you can definitely get some big plays doing that trick next up we got the Z spot it's another play that's good against random you just want to put uh, the B route here on a streak it's not really a man being play but you'll have a lot of success against zone with this flat and then and the route above it that looked like a man cover so so we're gonna go we're just gonna, gonna switch over to some of our man our zone cover concept so Got the B route here, like I said, the RB route will be open right away, the A route will be open over the top. Really easy series of plays. We'll have the same effect against cover three. You look at the same two routes. I so said this is something that you could run uh, with success um, over and over against pretty much any zone coverage. Now as far as your man coverage goes, you're probably gonna wanna put the X route on either a comeback or a slant or a curl or a, you know a drag, an in route, something like that. Any concept that beats man. Go ahead and we'll beat, uh, we'll put the cover three up again. We're gonna motion this guy across. This here has success against cover three in a one play touchdown capacity with the setup like this. As you can see right here, we just basically split the uh, the safety and the cornerback. We're gonna have an easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we got the cross drag. It's another play you can run against just about anything. I can, I typically like to motion this guy across and put him on a slant, uh, put the A route on a streak. If it's like a cover two, a lot of times the streak will get open, but ultimately you're just trying to work these crossers. As you can see, there's just so much going on. One of them is gonna be open pretty much every time. But yeah, I mean, really, you can just put the A route on the street. You don't really have to motion anybody out. The B route here, if it's a man coverage, I'm just going to take the closest guy and just work my way back. Uh, but that's pretty much the reach for all of zone coverages when it comes to this particular play. So I'll go ahead and do that one more time. Like I said, if it's a uh, you know, all-out blitz, take that drag. And I mean, you're just working your way back to the bigger play. If you have time, you can go to the bigger play. But right there, if it's an all-out blitz, I'm just going to get rid of it. So first, drag. Then the, uh, the Y route's next. Like I said, you can see right here, it's a much bigger play. He still gets open. Uh, and then I'm just working my way from front to back. Against zone coverage, if you do it like this, the running back is a pretty good option, but it has to be like a cover three or cover four for it to make sense. There, it looks like a man coverage. Everything was, was you know, the, the shorter routes were covered a little bit better than the, the deeper routes, but it's a really easy play to run. Next up, we got the power alert bubble. It's a real easy play. If it's a zone coverage, you want to throw it to the screen. If it's a man coverage, you want to run it. Typically, in a zone coverage look, all the cornerbacks drop back um, on a play like this, especially cover three, cover four. The, the cornerbacks always drop back, but even cover two this year, you can get under it pretty easily. Um, if it's a man coverage look, especially like something like an all-out man blitz, it's best just to hold the ball. Uh, as you can see right here, if you get past that first wave, I mean, there's nothing behind it, but you could also run the uh, power run against cover three and cover four because a lot of times the cornerbacks drop back. So these plays, you know, pretty much both work against anything with the exception being that the, the bubble screen, you really don't have a lot of success against man coverage next up we got the stick it's just a good cover to play all i have to do is streak the b route streak the a route put the x route just motion them out that's all i really got to do this x route here is going to be a really big play to the sidelines as long as you get a clean i was under pressure and it still worked out but it's a very easy cover to one play touchdown it's all about the pass lead you really just have to pass lead outside bullet pass lead outside once this guy you know, basically gets um, past the uh, the cornerback and you can have a really big play. Sometimes it's best to float it. I mean, I, I bullet. Next up, we have the wide receiver power fake jet. This play here kind of reminds me of a wildcat play. Um, is even I'm not even sure where the play's going half the time. But you can see, as long as you have some speed over here, the blocking sets up pretty darn good. So it's something that you can have success against just about any defense. I would say cover three, cover four, maybe even some man coverages might be best. Uh, and then you can see, I mean, you know, there is there is a possibility to get blown up in the backfield. 
You spend a lot of time in the backfield, which is like one of the downsides, but the blocking sets up really well. And this guy here, this first fake receiver, really turns into a solid lead blocker. Next up, we have the ace posts. This play is best against cover three and cover one defenses. This X route here just gets open in the seam. Against man coverages, they typically just get an get an easy release for a low ball throw. So just hold the left trigger and throw down uh, to the ground when you try to complete these passes. And safe catch. I mean, to be honest, pretty much any man or zone, these uh, routes will have an opportunity. You just want to make sure you always low throw and safe catch it. Next up, we have the halfback blunt dive. It's a good inside run. It's going to be best against defenses like cover two, man, and zone where the safeties typically play back. That's going to be best opportunity to run this ball up the middle. You can flip the play with the right stick if you think that there's more opportunity on the other side. You can also take these run plays wide. You don't have to go forward like an inside zone. You could always try to take them out around the tackles, but it really depends on the, the blocking animation you get. Next up, we got the close PA cross. This is a good cover three or cover four one play touchdown as is. Uh, just block the running back and make sure that you roll in the direction of the throw. As soon as it gets inside the safeties of the bullet and pass it over the top, and you can see you can get behind pretty much any defense as long as you have enough speed. I'll go to the replay real quick just to show you guys what I'm looking for. Because um, like I said, there is a glitch. It's been in the game for a very long time that when you roll in the direction of safeties, they typically don't draw back as quick now here the safety does draw back but basically i'm just waiting for this guy once he gets inside of this safety like that i can pretty much throw the ball so you can see i actually kind of threw that a little bit early but you can see the second he's beyond the 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 strong safety the only person that can really make a play on this is the strong safety so once he gets past that depth it's also a pretty safe time to throw because i'm bullet pass leading away from this safety so there's not really a play that he can make and i'm just basically throwing it to space other than that, this play has a lot of good man and zone beaters. If you go against like a cover two zone, or a cover two man, I'm sorry, you basically have a couple of good routes. The crossing routes are all good routes when it comes to cover two, uh, or any man really. So the RB route, the B route, all these routes are gonna have success when it comes to um, pretty much any zone, I mean man or zone. But against man, your tight ends are gonna be good. Against zone, um, you're gonna have a lot of success as well. So we'll go cover three locks just to show you guys uh, that you can basically just run this so like a lot of plays that I'm showing where you're basically just kind of reading from front to back and then you can see that you know one of these guys is going to get up against pretty much any man or zone defense. Next up we got the halfback blunt dive. It's just one of the better run formations in the in the uh... just one of the better run plays in the formation. You pretty much want to look for a lane like this where typically that defensive end is out wide enough that um, he takes himself out of the play. That's pretty much the best way to, uh, to put it. Typically that left guard will pull and get to that second level right there. He didn't quite get enough, uh, but that's pretty much gonna be your, your look. The only other look you're gonna want is like right here, you can see they're kind of spread. I would rather flip this though. We have a lane here and uh, you can see we have additional blocking. So we should have somebody get to that second level and you can treat this like a stretch run right there. I messed it up by hitting my lineman, but you can see there was a huge lane opened up to the outside there. So it's an inside read first, then you can take it outside. You can really flip it to either side with the right stick. I find that the best looks gonna be a spread alignment or if they're shift towards, you know, if they're overly shifted towards the two tight ends. Next up, we got the PA boot left tackle. Run this against random, but ultimately, uh, this is pretty much a man-beating play. You're going to go from the RB route to the A route to the X route. That's going to be your, your looks right here. It looks like we have an all-out man blitz, um, but that's pretty much going to be your reach. This is going to be your money play against uh, man blitzes, um, but ultimately, the comeback route is going to be good as well. It looks like we have another man blitz. I picked random, I swear. But here, I mean, this uh, the RB route was getting across that really well. They got caught up at the last second, but like I said, you're reading that first. You're reading that RB route. Typically, he'll get open best under cover three and cover four zones, like right here. I'm not really sure what he has, but none of those guys really got separation. So taking the X route as your last read, um, the the uh, the B route really isn't part of the read structure at all. Let's do that one more time. I think I threw that ball a little bit late. Uh, and then you can see right here, you know, we can get in front of that. I mean, one of those three routes will be open just about every single time. Next up, we have the halfback inside zone. It's another play from this formation where essentially, um, you know, it's the best inside run in the formation. There's no real reads needed. Um, except, you know, you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of a gap to the left side. But this plus play here does a pretty good job of blowing open holes. These inside zone runs are definitely some of the most consistent in Madden 22. And it works really well with the stretch play. So, like here, I could easily switch over to the stretch play because there's not necessarily a gap. Or I could just run this and try to take it outside. Uh, but without a doubt, 
out. This is if you have spacing, if you have gaps, which a lot of defenses have. Some defenses have more than others. Uh, you can see how you can really have a lot of success, uh, and you know, just get to the next level. Like that there, that uh, that guard typically will try to get to that second level. He did a pretty good job there. Let's watch the replay. Early on, it didn't look like this guard was going to peel off. If I can get over here real quick. Um, all right, whatever, but yeah, so you can see he starts off with the double team. These inside zones you typically start off with a double team and then they get to the next level, which is why I ran directly at him before peeling outside because I wanted to make sure that he sealed that block so that I would have that space. Next up, we have the PA tight end seam. Pretty much just want to drag the B route. If you want to, you can drag the RB route and give yourself an extra blocker. It really doesn't matter. But ultimately, those two routes will get open against just about anything. You're really going front to back here. You're really going to look from the short route to the, the mid route and then to the deepest route, which is the comeback, which you can see right there. I had a, a lot of success with here. We've got a man zero blitz. The comeback's going to beat that. As I, I, I don't know what happened there. I guess I made a bad adjustment after I threw the ball. But you can see against man or zone, it's really much pretty much the same read you're just pretty much reading the drag to the crosser to the comeback route and one of those three should be open just about every single time here probably should have threw that a little bit earlier but you can see it's just a front to back read really easy next up we have the pax burst cross it's another play that's good against random plays i'm just going to put the b route here on a streak the a route on a drag and it's pretty much, you know, reading front to back. If the running back's open here in the flat, I'm going to take that. That's typical of a cover three or a cover four. But I'm really working my way from front to back. I'm really working from the running back to the drag to the A route. The B route is really just there to pull coverage. This is pretty much going to be all that I uh, that I do here. And you see, like I said, somebody's always going to be open. Right there, that was probably the most safe route. It took me a little while to decipher because I thought that the deep route was going to be there. But ultimately, something will be here. Uh, when it comes to all these particular plays, you can see right here, that was probably a man coverage, but I think the my, my controller was on the linebacker. I gotta be better about being on the defensive tackle with this remote, just so I don't necessarily uh, run into those problems. Let's go through that one more time. I said that one there probably wasn't too indicative of what I was gonna be looking at. Let's say right here, there's three levels crossing. One of them will be open every single time. The spacing is pretty impossible for any defense to take away. Next up, we have the PA Experts cross. Another cover three one play touchdown on old gen consoles. You have to run this from a hash mark and you have to run it to the open side of the field. So I'm just going to motion in the X route here and put him on a streak. Then I'm going to put the B route on a streak. I'm going to block the running back and slide my protection to the left. That's all I really have to do. Then I'm just waiting for this X route to cross 35 yards so I can pass lead him away from the safety. As you can see right there, it gets passed, although that wasn't necessarily the best catching animation. We'll go ahead and we'll do that again. The um, you know as far as I'll put the or I'll put the um, the B round of streak and I'll put the RB round of drag for a check down. As far as the blocking adjustments, that's that's not really mandatory for the play to work. I'm just doing that because I find that it works best to double team. Number one, their best pass rusher, but number two, I like to roll in the direction of the throw. And then you can see right there, we get a great pass lead as we get the touchdown that time. So you can see it's a very easy one play touchdown as long as it's set up correctly. And you have to watch this guy here. Watch number one, you got to watch for that cornerback to stop running, which he will. Number two, you have to wait for him to pass 35 yards, which is right about here. So once he does that, I'm probably already throwing. I guess it's it's somewhere. Maybe it's not 35 yards. Maybe it's closer to 30. As you can see, the ball was out of my hand before the receiver reached that amount. But maybe it's 35 yards away from the quarterback. I'm not 100% sure. So the fact that I'm dropped back might be part of the reason why it worked. Next up, we have the stretch alert looky. This is a very good goal line play. This is a very good goal line play, as a lot of people like to come out in uh, man coverage look. So against man coverage, this is going to be a really good route. I mean, you could easily get five yards. This is a cover three I'm going against right now, and still having a lot of success. The cover three, however, is also, uh, you know, cover three, cover four. The running back is going to be one of the better plays, as you can see. I mean, there's typically nothing out here. The cornerbacks drop back in those scenarios and cover three and cover four off zones. You can also control the formation by motioning this guy out and you can see the, the defense shifts away from the direction I'm going. And it would also help to get um, you know that cornerback a lot of times. As you can see, I feel it's best to leave the tight end in. You have the option if you want to, to motion the formation because this offensive formation um, is really what controls the defense as odd as that sounds. This formation here because of the three tight end set and the offset basically shifts the forcefully shifts the defense to a line in that direction. Next up we got the stretch alert bubble. It's gonna be best against cover three and cover four off zones. 
play here. I mean, the B route is going to, you only have one blocker, but you can steal that for a good five yards, probably on average, running that. Um, ultimately, though, you can also hand off against cover three. It's going to be also a good play to hand off against cover three and cover four because typically um, you have a lot of uh, the cornerbacks just typically drop back. So this entire play is really going to be best against cover three and cover four. The quicker you get out, the better, and the faster you receive you have in the slot, the better. Next up, we get the halfback inside zone. It's just a good run play. I find inside zones are typically some of the better um, run plays. A lot of times, this this uh, guard will, will 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 break off to the next level though he didn't on that play but you can see how you can have a, a very consistent run game with a play like this as we get uh, two back-to-back -back positive runs that one obviously a very big run uh, it doesn't really matter like i said a lot of times this left guard will break off if he does great if he doesn't obviously it's less successful next up we have the mesh against cover two zone you just streak the b route motion out the rb route it's really that simple the RB route will get outside the cover two, just as long as you uh, wait till he gets past the cornerback and then bullet and side, uh, uh, pass lead to the sideline. Against cover three, the B route will get open in the seam, as long as you have a, a little bit of a better tight end. If I put Waller at that tight end spot, it would get open. <coughs> against cover three, the B route will get open up the seam, and against man coverage is the Y route and the uh, a route the drags will be really good plays uh, but ultimately the biggest play to be had here is the one to cover two outside to the running back next up we have the sluggo seam against man cover one and man zero put the b route in a drag uh, you can motion them out you can you know try to get that safety over a little bit i'll put the a route on a streak as well just to make sure it pulls back that cover one safety uh, and the x route should get open against just about any man cover just as long as you have um you know a pretty decent receiver right there and you get the touchdown but you can see it gets behind the cornerback that's the bottom line so man cover one man zero should have that effect next up out of the single back wing type we got the stretch alert looky this play is going to be best against cover three and cover four to hand it off and try to take it wide uh, and if it's a man coverage you typically just want to throw it to the x route it's a really good play especially if it's like a cover if you're inside the red zone and a lot of times people come out like man blitzes and stuff like that you can have success to the slant especially if they run commit this is a really really, really good play if you're pounding the rock and your opponent uh you know doesn't have a lot of success stopping the run they might start run committing then you can throw it to the the stretch alert looky Next up, we have the zone fake jet. Now, this play here, you want to make sure you have your fast tight end. Like, I can put Darren Waller over here, and I can definitely, um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the most effective play. It's really going to work best against cover three and cover four. Like, this here looks like it might be a cover two, so I wouldn't suggest it. But it's something that you can definitely throw in as a nice wrinkle. So, any off coverage, cover three, cover four, these are not looking like that. These are looking like cover twos. Um, but you can see that you can have some success, and you can definitely catch your opponent off guard. Next up, we have the PA Jet Sweep. So the X route here, you can see, even without the ability to smart route it, it's still a very good man cover one play or man zero. It's 50-50. It's a lot of these... Um, a lot of these routes, sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't. It's a good shot play, though. Somebody's running cover one man. As long as he's, if he gets to this point, just a bullet, or a, you can either bullet or lob. Typically against man, you want to lob outside. But you can see how, you know, once he gets, if he gets even with the cornerback, he's leaving. Now, there are, are times, like I'll try to run again. There are times where that might not work out. I said right there, that's not a good look. The tight end here is a decent crossing option, but that's just the difference in the look between whether it's a home run or it's not. So it's really a one a one play route. Like I said, you see here, he doesn't get behind him. He doesn't bite, so obviously you're not going to make that throw. But he has to get behind the cornerback for the play to be successful. Next up, we have the PAU drag wheel. All I'm going to do here, number one, I like to motion this guy in because I feel like that route's going to be more effective. You can put the B route on a streak and the Y route on a drag. And then this is pretty much going to be the best setup. But if you want additional blocking, um, you could easily block the B route, put the A route in the drag because I don't really find that, that that route's really doing too much. You can also block the running back, uh, but ultimately I find the play action is helpful when it comes to uh, these safeties. And you're pretty much going to get this guy or the drag open pretty much every time. And I said the running back here, that's a good, you know, if it's a cover three or something, the running back's going to be a good check down in the opposite direction. Um, so you don't really need the uh, the other tight end crossing. That's just something that if they cover, you know, if they follow 
all these other routes to the right, you can always throw it to the running back. But realistically, it's all about the Y route and the X route crossing. So this is just a really good high-low play there. Got to do a little bit better job with timing and setting my feet. But you can see how he's getting open pretty much every time. And that'll be that way against pretty much any man or zone. This route's going to be a very good route. So go ahead and we'll do that one more time. Like I said, that tight end is really just to pull everybody back. And then you're just basically getting a very big play. Um, just as long as you throw it with a little bit of better timing. Now we have a man coverage. It's going to be the exact same thing. I said the drag is always there. Man coverage it might beat even better because you can see it's just a very good route. Next up we have the PA slot cross. Against cover two zone, this play needs no adjustments and it's an easy one play touchdown. I typically like to roll in the direction of the throw though. As you can see, the safety is too busy reacting to the, um, the underneath receivers and then he basically gets beat over the top. Against cover three, so I'll switch to that. Works the same way. You just have to motion this uh, receiver in. I'm also going to drag the B route um, just to basically pull that cornerback down as much as possible and also give myself a check down. But you can see right here, once he gets past a certain point, he is he basically gets over the top of the cover three cornerback. I'll go to the replay. I like to uh, to roll out just because I want to shorten the throw. Plus, it also helps to pull the cornerback down when you when you roll in the direction of the, of the cornerbacks that you're throwing to. But basically, there's a point where you want to throw it right when he gets inside of this free safety. You just want to bullet past lead away from the free safety it's a very easy completion for typically was a catch and run one play touchdown also works against cover four cover four match as you can see we just have um you know digs just basically streaking right across uh the field again right there so it's, it's in a one play touchdown it's pretty much any zone against man cover two i do the exact same thing because that cover two safety will still be reacting to the lower routes uh, the same way it was in cover two zones. So pretty much any man or zone, this play will be a one play touchdown. Next up, we got the Sluggo Seam. This play here, all I would do is drag the B route for a check down, but any uh, man coverage other than cover two, um, this guy here is just gonna basically, you know, beat that pretty easily. It's a man beating route. As long as you have a fast receiver, a good receiver, it's all that really matters. Next up, we got the Stretch Alert Lookie. Plays probably best against cover three zone when the cornerbacks drop back. Uh, cover three or cover four. <clears throat> the run is best against cover three, cover four zones. Uh, works pretty well against cover two. So any pretty much any zone now, it's weak to the stretch. Uh, and if it's a man coverage, you just basically want to throw it to the X route. Next up, we have the zone weak alert bubble. I find the bubble screen really works against any zone coverage. Uh, typically cover two would cover out here a little bit better, but since the patch, it doesn't really work that way. So pretty much um, any zone coverage, you can throw it to the bubble. Uh, when it comes to man coverage or cover two, uh, I would say handing it off is probably best. Um, you can see, I mean, this play gives a really big running lane. Uh, even though I didn't really get the blocking that I was expecting. I mean, I'm a lot of times expecting this uh, left guard to pull back, but he pretty much just leaves you one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with the linebacker, but I'm in a lot of space. Next up, we have the strong wing. Make sure you put a running back at the fullback spot. The faster, the better. I'm going to pick the drive. Against cover two, just motion braid out and put the B route either on a streak or a delay fade. You can do the delay fade based off the fact that I'm going to be doing that a lot. Uh, and then you're going to see how this RB route can be a very big play outside of cover two. Now, you can get a catch and run up the sideline a lot of times, but I bullet and pass lead to the sideline just to make sure that the safety doesn't have a play on the ball. Once again, you can go streak or delay fade. It doesn't really matter. I like to get into the habit of delay fading. But you can see how this running back, especially with the speed advantage that I have, can be a very big play against cover two man or pretty much any man coverage. You're going to have that success. It's probably glitches against cover three. Go and make that motion again. We'll do that delay fade again. Now you're going to see how the cornerback pretty much glitches out uh, because of the delay fade. As you can see, uh, we still kind of get past it there. That wasn't the glitch out version that I was talking about, but he definitely slows down and lets him pass, which isn't typical. We're going to do that one more time. Like I said, this has the ability to really glitch out the cornerback and make sure we get that look. But even like I said, even like I say, still getting past it, which is the most important part. I'm going to do that one more time. We're going to delay fade the A route this time because I think that's the reason it's not glitching out the way that I want it to. So here we go one more time. Like I said, there's that glitch. So basically the cornerback just completely disregards this uh, this running back 
and I guess the problem was I wasn't delay fading Knox. You have to delay fade the, the tight end closest to the line of scrimmage. So we're going to do it one more time. Like I said, watch the cornerback. He just completely bugs out. After that cornerback bugs out, you pretty much just have the bullet and pass lead back inside away from the sideline. You have a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we got cover four. Go match first. This really reacts a lot like man coverage as this RB route will have the exact same success and the cornerback pretty much glitches out the same way. So pretty much just, you know, the same reaction no matter what the defense is. Just motion out the running back and put the A route here on a delay fade. That's all you got to do. And it really doesn't matter what defense you're looking at at that point. Although, you know, you still got to slide your protection, which I forgot to do. But if you have a fast enough running back, he just gets right up the seam there. I'm going to do the same step. This is the only defense that it won't hit a one-play touchdown against, by the way. But you can still get a big play out of the flat. So, you know, no matter what the defense is, you can have success. So we got the toss. So I'm going to make this motion to mirror the pass play. And then you'll see how we get plenty of blocking out here on the perimeter for a big run play. So this toss play works really well, either standard or with this motion. I still would rather put in an actual fullback, but you're gonna see how, you know, you can look like you're still running that play and then boom, you're just hitting it with a very explosive toss play. Although that play there, the running back just fell down. So make sure you put a tight end or, um, you know, if you're gonna run this particular version, a tight end or a fullback would make the most sense. Especially if you have like an athletic um, tight end so that maybe you can do both. But you can see how the blocking here, I mean the toss play is already a good blocking play, but it's even better now. Next up out of the iPhone Z close, we have the counter weak. It's just a good run play to the opposite side. I mean, I just find that the blocking, um, it works best if they're shifted towards the strong side or if the defensive end is out really far wide of the uh, left tackle. You can flip and run the other way, like right here we have a box safety. So we can flip that, go the opposite direction, although realistically when the box pack like this is probably not the best time to run that play. Um, here we go again, this looks like something that's probably like a cover four. Uh, it's going to be best against, you know, cover two zone, cover two man, uh, and outside against cover three and cover four defenses. Next up out of the Z close, we got the PA sale. So all you gotta do is run us from a hash mark to the open side of the field, motion in the X route and put him on a five yard out. Then you wanna put the A route on a streak and that's it, that's all you gotta do. So we're basically just going to hold this ball till the B route here gets inside the safety and then over the corner. And then you can see we have a window for a one play touchdown against cover three post November patch. Next up we have the 95 Willie. It's a good run play inside or out. Cover two, you're probably going to want to, ins want to run it inside more. Cover three and cover four, you're going to want, to want to run it outside more. But this is a very successful run play no matter what defense you're looking at. You can see how, I mean, there I just, I ran right to the safety. I probably would have a huge run. I'm really reading the defensive end on where I should go. If he gets outside, I got to go inside. But you can see, like, I mean, this is a very successful run inside or out. I don't know if I'll be able to get the touchdown here. But you can see it's really a simple read. Just reading that defensive end. Next up, we got the counter F. This is a good run play just as long as you don't sprint. I mean, the blocking sets up really well. Just don't sprint through the hole. Otherwise, you're going to run into your own blocking. This is a play here. Some counter plays, you're in like danger of losing yards. This one here, no, I don't think so. This one here takes you, as long as you let it guide you, takes you right where you need to be, and you can have a lot of successful runs. Just like I said, just, just walk through the hole. Don't run through the hole, and you'll see that you'll get more successful runs. Next up, we have the fullback dive. It's a good short yards run play. I find if you motion this running back out, it actually works best because he'll become a blocker if you have to stretch the play wide. But you ultimately just need uh, a running back at the fullback spot, and you can see how you can basically have success just running it right up the middle in the opposite direction. Next up, we got the flanker drive. The route that the fullback is on is a really good man beating play. Uh, the Y route here. Basically, if you throw that on the break, he's pretty much always going to get outside of pretty much any man coverage. That includes the tight ends as well. The A route and the B route are both man beating routes as well. The B route obviously is just a drag, but the A route is kind of like an augmented uh, in route. So ultimately, they're both, all three of those routes are going to be big man coverage beaters. Next up, we have the halfback gut. This play here, you can motion in this receiver like some of the pass plays, or you can motion across the A route, the B route. It doesn't matter. You can motion across any of these guys. Uh, but this is ultimately a good run play in the uh, wide looping left, in my opinion. It kind of takes you up the middle, but I don't find that's the best run. I find the best run is taking this out wide. Next up, we got the PA counter post. 
against cover three, just motion in this route here, motion in the X route. You have to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field as well. Put the A route on an on a pass block and the B route on an out route. That's all you have to do, a five yard out. You could go and put the RB route on a streak too if you want. Um, just try to pull that uh, tight end or that um, free safety over a little bit. But ultimately this is you know pretty much the setup here and you can see that this route's gonna get right over the top of that cover three cornerback. So just to repeat, most important step, run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, block the tight end, put the B route on a five yard out and motion in um, the X route. That's your home run play. You can put the RB route on a streak if you want, but that's optional. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.